Thank you. When you hear um, Scott's story, I mean, for many of us, right, that's the first time we've ever sat in someone like your presence. It, it was, it was hard to hear. But you, you've heard this. You've heard that a lot, right? In the people you've I've heard it a whole lot, and you know, and I've heard stories similar to Scott's from other clan members, clansmen, and clanswomen. And uh, so Scott's story is not unique, but they come from all walks of life. Scott, Scott started out as a just a, a rank and file member, and he rose to the level of Grand Dragon State Leader and then Imperial Wizard, Grand Dragon for the state of Tennessee, Met, uh, Byron de la Beckwith, who murdered. Medgar Evers was like a godfather to Scott. They were good friends. Carolyn Bryant, the, uh, the woman who Emmett Till whistled at, was a friend of Scott's. And he, he had all this in him. And it had to come out because he saw how the hatred was eating him alive. And I don't know if, if the clip was shown earlier of, of the uh, Klan rally that I attended. But what I found is this. We spend too much time talking about each other mm -hmm. and talking at each other yes. and not enough time talking with, with each, each other. other okay and what i want to explain real quick is this you know I, I traveled all over the country interviewing clan leaders and clan members who were active and not all of them became friends with me but many of them did and shed their their beliefs uh, in the state of Maryland, we had a large clan contingency. When the, uh, the Imperial Wizard and Grand Dragon became friends of mine and quit the clan, the clan in Maryland fell apart. Hmm. Today, there is no more Ku Klux Klan in the state of Maryland. That does not mean there are no more racists in Maryland. There are plenty of racists in Maryland, but there's no more organized clan. You know, every now and then, uh, they try to revive it. Only three or four show up, and two of them are drunk. But when, when the uh, when the uh, the imperial wizard, who was imperial wizard over thirteen states, quit the clan and became my friend, he gave me his robe and hood. This is the robe of the imperial wizard, right here. Okay, and of course, the hood. This means he no longer believes and what this stands for. In, in fact, he has spoken out against it and has apologized. Upon occasion, he will go on, on lecture tours with me and speak out against the Klan. And it's all because of a conversation like we're having now. Mm -hmm. The topic of race has been taboo too long yes. in our country. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about earlier, where I thought that this, ele this election it has sparked a lot more of these conversations, which is what we need to have. Let's take that taboo off. Let's start talking. We don't have to agree with everything, but I'll tell you something. When two, when two enemies are talking, they are not fighting. They're That's talking. Right. They might be yelling and screaming and beating their fists on the table to drive home a point, but at least they're talking. It's when the talking ceases mm -hmm. that the ground becomes fertile for violence. Mm -hmm. And to, to paraphrase something that Bernice's father said that I truly believe in. I, I was 10 years old when the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, died. And my father sat me down and told me a lot more than I knew about Dr. King. And I listened to his I Have a Dream speech. And at, at, there was a point in it where he said, I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase, where he said he had a dream that the sons of former slave owners would sit down to the table yes of brotherhood with the sons of, of uh, former slaves. That's what I've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. That's what Bernice mm -hmm. King is doing and Alveda mm -hmm. King are doing to, to bring this country together. That dream is becoming a reality. Mm -hmm. And if we had no hope, it would be no point in pursuing that dream. But we're turning that into a reality. Scott, I, I noticed when uh, Daryl pulled out the robe that you dropped your head, almost like you were ashamed. Did I read that right? No, to, to you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, it's just like, I, well, I, I'll explain to you this way. It's just like when I visited Martin Luther King Museum in Memphis. I, I've been in Memphis all my life. I'd, I have never walked in the doors of the uh, Martin Luther King Museum there. But one day I went in. And uh, 
I remember I remember walking through the museum and there was a there was a display of a, a Klansman with a robe and everything like that, you know, in a glass in case. And I felt the, probably the most sick and embarrassed feeling in my life. And when I see, of course, Daryl's robes, it basically does the same thing to me. I've got, I still got my robe, but I use it for visuals, you know, when I talk and things like that. And a clan flag. What, what, what do people say when you talk to them? To, to, to men and women who, you, who may be friends, who you know, who still hold the views that you once held? What do you say to them? What do they say to you? Well, I've had them, uh, of course, I've had them criticize me and tell me, you know, you know, they don't believe I've changed this much and things like that. But I've always told them, you know, of course, you know, action speaks louder than words. You know, I'm not out here doing this for, for, for anything for myself. You know, I'm receiving death threats and, and, and I've got a family. I've got a lovely daughter that, that I actually lost, uh, you know, I lost contact with for a long time. And, uh, I've been reunited with her and, and Daryl has met her, but I just I try my best to to convince them and and talk with them and listen to them. I've heard a lot about listening, and uh, it's a common thing, and and that is basically what what turned me around and some of the other people that I've helped turn around. Now we must act. Use the hashtag Let's Bridge. We welcome your donations to the King Center on our Facebook page or dreamforwardfund.org. That's dreamforwardfund.org. We also give special thanks to our sponsor, the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Special thanks to our partner, the Martin Luther King Jr. Advisory Council. Let's bridge young people this summer with Camp Now. For more information, Visit us at choosenonviolence.org.